together when she was in search and rescue. She was terrific. She had great sense of timing. Timing is everything in that job, so... I wasn't surprised when she got promoted to caseworker. She's a natural. I mean, she totally gets the whole human mentality thing, but in a good way, a really good way. Well, there's um, that door at uh, Dr. Jean's. Oh, right, right. And, and I was thinking I would talk to the preacher about fixing the sign out in front of the church. Sophie's always complaining about some loose hinges on her piano bench. Well, that should keep you busy. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Joey. He used to talk a lot, huh? Oh, yes. Especially to Mr. Beans. He was this funny little green teddy bear with brown ears and a, a red ribbon. Whatever Joey has locked in his mind, he would have shared it with Mr. Beans. Have you ever been to Dallas? Uh, yes, ma'am. You have? have dates and uh, uh, corroborating documentation and tickets and receipts. Have, have I ever debriefed you before? No, ma'am. Oh, <clears throat> I've got a question for you. <laughs> they all have questions, I can tell you that. I heard you play the piano. You'd be kind enough to play something for me. Maybe some Chopin or... Beethoven? No. That's all been classified. Oh, but, um, I've been cleared at the security level. You have? Oh, yeah. Well, this is highly irregular. It breaks all of the protocol. Crazy, Wayne. That bike's been out there a year and nobody's touched it. Now suddenly it's gone? Who would do a thing like that? 
Hey, Joey. Got something for you. Mr. Beans! I fix toasters, I sew teddy bears. What can I say? impression here this town could use a few more people like you why don't you call up some of your angel friends see if they want to come over and play uh -huh. you laugh now but um, someday i might just surprise you all right everybody take your seats please <laughs> looks like just about everybody's here pastor where's your paper bag oh i must have left it at home how did you recognize me without it <laughs> Well, it's the first laugh I've heard around here in a long time. Sounds good. But we have business to talk about. Is Mr. Carver here? Indeed I am, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> For those of you who haven't met Mr. Carver, he's a lawyer from Chicago, and he has some business he'd like to discuss with us all. Thank you. I represent a venture capital consortium interested in buying your town and converting the land into commercial property, specifically the world's largest retail complex of factory outlet stores. Excuse me. Uh, you mean you want to buy everything, the whole town? Everything. It will mean a great deal of money for each of you. Then we can get the hell out of here and get on with our lives. It's not that simple, Eddie. Everyone here has lost a great deal, and money is not going to take the pain away. No, what would take the pain away is some justice. But nobody's looking for that. Nobody's trying to find the man that did this to us. We don't know there was a man. No, I know. Joey wasn't the only one who saw somebody that day. I think I did, too. Let's just think this through. I've thought it through, and I say sell. You know, I've got nothing holding me here but a boatload of bills and an empty house that I can barely stand to be in. What about you, Peter? What do you say about this? I don't know. When my mama started the cafe 20 years ago, this was a different town. We were on our way up. People moving in. Babies being born. We had a future. But that future's gone now. The future died in 1963. Thirty years ago, I swore an oath to dedicate myself to healing people. I've done the best I could with the people of this town, with the children of this town. But I don't know how to do that now. I keep wondering if we can't heal together, then maybe we should try it apart. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Would you mind an observation from an outsider? No, please, Monica. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Uh, no one could visit your town and not feel the terrible loss that you've all suffered. And yet even... Since I've been here, I've, I've seen a change in so many of you. Perhaps you haven't noticed it. Maybe it's because I'm an outsider, but That's I... That's right, you are an outsider, lady. You can't tell us what to do with this town. Neither can I, but I guarantee you, you will never get a better offer. Well, then, we'll just take what you're offering under consideration. I say we vote on it right now. Let's get an idea about where we stand. All right, but this is not official. Everyone in favor of considering Mr. Carver's offer, raise your hand. Is there anybody who wants to stay? Who the hell do you think you are, pal? I like this town. There's good gentle-hearted people here. A small town like this is an oasis 
in an ugly world. It is nice here. But how can you stay here after all you've lost? Well, that guy hasn't lost anything. He's only been here a week. I think you just want a piece of the deal. Our deal. Well, it's not going to happen. I've been keeping an eye on you. Has anybody noticed how things started disappearing around here after he showed up? Excuse me. Did you say that he's only been here a week? Yeah, that's right. I don't think that's possible. No, it's true. He is new here. Madam, I was here a year ago making my initial assessment of this property. And I saw somebody at that school that day. I am almost certain that it was him. Right around lunchtime. That terrible day. Oh, my God. It was him. He's the man Joey saw. I knew it wasn't an accident. Folks, let's not jump to any conclusions here. He does look familiar. Have you been here before, young man? <clears throat> but yes, but I... I knew it. Yes, I remember him now. I do. Zach, say something. My baby was in that school! You killed my kids, you son of a... Folks around here have been looking for somebody to pin that explosion on for a long time now. Are you arresting me? Let's call it protective custody. Thank you. Are you all right? Yeah. Folks like you take a big chance by dropping out of society. No credit card, no bills, no friends keeps you nice and free. But always a little bit suspicious. I just never stayed in one place long enough to have a, uh, an address. Sorry to do this to you. Do what you gotta do, Sheriff. Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode. Still hope. All good things must come to an end. Remember all the good times we had together. I will. Carol Burnett hosts the very last Touched by an Angel. We've got more to look forward to. We have eternity. The unforgettable series finale after 60 Minutes, CBS Tomorrow. Walk with you. When you walk down. seen my granddaughter. Isn't she adorable? Oh, lovely. Cute. Have you seen my son, Jeffrey? Yeah. Yes. So, Kathy, do you have any pictures of your family? Well, I think I just might. This is my son, Bob, and his wife. A fine lawyer, and he wants to help you. You're the victim of mob psychology, Zach. You're getting a raw deal. Yeah, well, that's not exactly the popular opinion around these parts. Opinions aren't facts. Fact is, I was there that day to school. What? Why? I had business. Who else knows about this? I told the sheriff. What kind of business? It's hard to explain. Try me. It's personal. Zach, you've got to tell us the truth. I am telling the truth. I just can't tell you anymore. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in jail? If I have to. Were you there, Andrew? No. 
I don't know who handled this. It must have been hard. I wish Tess were here. Monica, you're going through an evaluation. Now, how do you expect to get a promotion if you still need Tess for the answers? Well, it's not a coincidence that so many of my old assignments are here. But what's the connection? Maybe you're the common bond between them. All the work that you've done with these people in the past, you've given them the strength to hold this whole town together, but they don't know that yet. And maybe you're the only one that, that can get them to see that. to trial. We could have had this thing dismissed if it weren't for the new prosecutor they sent. When did this happen? Today. Nobody seems to have worked with him before. And I'm not too excited about being the first. There he is. That's him right now. Don't you want to see my costume? The worst part is most people don't see him coming until it's almost too late. Just like a lion. Just like a lion. Do you know him? Mike, you know that God is real, right? Well, yeah. Well, Satan is real, too. And he is here. Him? Yes. If God is absolute love, the devil is absolute evil. He prowls the earth like a lion looking for anyone or anything to devour. And I'm going to try a case against him? Yes. My Monica. My ears are burning. Counselor. He won't win this one. Oh. I don't know. Look around. So many people in this town already touched by an angel. By you, in fact. And yet they're still so very angry and vengeful. And vulnerable. I don't get it. Why does the devil care if some drifter gets put away? I'm not sure. But by giving these people someone to blame, it will create enough hatred to destroy this town. And that would certainly be worth his time. We're going to need some help. Joey Machulis is the only one I know of who actually saw the explosion. He was out cold when I got there, but when he came to, the first thing he said was, what happened to the man? Where did the man go? I'm telling you, there was somebody else there. This was no accident. Thank you. No further questions? In your opinion, is Joey a reliable witness? He's a little slow, but he doesn't lie. It's no secret he's mentally challenged. Yeah, but I saw somebody, too. The defendant admitted that he had been in town the week of the school fire. Is that correct, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Said he was here on business. What kind of business? He just said business. Hmm. How mysterious. There have been a number of thefts uh, in the week before he was arrested. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Little pink bicycle, uh, toy truck. Some photos from Dr. Gene Tobias's office. Little things to us, insignificant things. They belong to the kids who died at school. Things they left behind. He took my daughter's bike from in front of the cafe. Right where she left it after she got that flat tire. Thank you. Go ahead. Did you actually see the defendant take the bike? No but had been sitting there for a year before he got to town. 
No one else would have done it. Zach came over to fix a door. He asked a lot of questions about the children. He was looking at the pictures the whole time. And the next morning, the pictures were gone. No one else had been in my office that day. Your Honor, is the prosecution charging my client with theft? I am working to establish a profile common to mass murderers. Objection. Order, please. Serial killers often collect trophies or souvenirs of their kills. Personal items, such as children's belongings, photographs? Yes. Nothing further? It was my first trip to this town. I was near the school, inspecting the property for some clients of mine who were interested in investing in the town. And what did you see? I saw him. He went into the school, and then, before the explosion, I saw him come out again. Are you sure it was the defendant? Absolutely. If you saw this man exiting the school before the explosion, why did it take you a year before coming forward with this information? I, I didn't make the connection until I saw him again. Isn't it true that the defendant was making a difference in how the people felt about this town? That he was actually trying to get them to reconsider your buyout offer? Perhaps, but I don't believe he actually changed anyone's mind. It would certainly behoove you to get him out of the way. You travel a great deal. Where do you go? All over. You name it, I've been there. Loveland? Yes. Milford? Yes. Centerville? Yes. Are you aware that over the past two years, explosions have occurred in those towns that have cost the lives of many innocent children. Yes. Interesting. Did you take the items that were reported missing? I borrowed them. Borrowed. For what purpose? No, don't. Tell me. I don't want to know. Redirect, Your Honor. Proceed. Did you murder 46 children and eight teachers? So many innocent young lives is incalculably tragic. Two eyewitnesses saw the defendant come out of the school that awful day. Two. You heard the testimony of Mr. Jensen, the serial killer profiler. He told us about the trophies these monsters sometimes collect, and the defendant himself admits to taking such items. Circumstantial evidence? Perhaps. But if you see a man walk into a garage and drive out in a car, do you have to see him put the key in the ignition to know that he started it? It was an old boiler, one that only needed a little adjustment to cause that horrible explosion. Something an experienced, self-professed handyman would know. John 10, verse 10, tells us the devil comes to steal and kill and destroy. And I tell you, the devil is in this courtroom today.
What happened in that school is a terrible, regrettable, undeniable tragedy. We all know that. 46 children, eight teachers died. The loss and sorrow suffered by the people in our community is beyond question. But loss and sorrow do not determine guilt. And guilt is the key here. Guilt is the key. It was common knowledge in this town that the boiler in that school was old and needed to be replaced. And as much as it hurts to lose a child, it hurts more to think that that loss could have been prevented. It would be blessed relief to lift that mantle of guilt, to shift the blame from our own burdened shoulders to those of a stranger. But this is not the answer. And this is not the truth. The peace that we all pray for won't come by sending an innocent man to prison. The jury is excused to begin its deliberations. Bailiff? What did he mean he borrowed those toys? I don't know. I thought it was all over when the prosecutors started naming all those other towns that had mysterious explosions. But when Zack was on the stand, I saw something genuinely compassionate about him. Rindy's. Yeah. Jerry's still out. Called him for dinner. Well, that's not a very good sign. It means they think they'll finish tonight. This has all happened so fast. I, we haven't had time to think. I think that was the idea. Randy's blue plate special. Get it while it's hot. Hey, if you can scrounge me up another piece of that apple pie, I'll give you your guitar back. Oh, I don't play anymore. Why not? Too many memories. Rumor has it we may have a verdict soon. Then what? Either you'll take a trip to Cannon City tomorrow, or I'll buy you lunch at Randy's. You're a good man, Wayne. I don't know about that. Anything I can do for you? Well, if you're a praying man, now would be a good time. Hadn't done much out of that in a long time. I'll see what I can do about the pie, though. Tell you what. You let me hear you play something. Just call it even. I told you I don't play anymore. Your music is like a prayer, Wayne. The more you keep at it, the more things start to change. You're beginning to sound like my mom. Okay, let's say this is your car and you get into an accident. Oh boy. If you take it to an all-state recommend.
Daddy never went to church on Sunday He said that's one thing I'll never do Mama never gave up, she said, someday You'll be sitting here beside me and you I can still hear Mama softly talking Her tears falling on her folded hands So that Easter Sunday that he walked in That's when I began to understand when Mama prayed, I think it's time for Peter to open up the church. Good things happen when Mama prayed. Lives were changed. Not much more than five foot tall. The mountains big and small crumbled all. Isn't like every one of them got answered But the times they weren't Seems to me were rare You almost felt sorry for the devil Cause heaven knows he didn't have a prayer When mama prayed But mountains big and small Crumbled all the way when Mama prayed Crumbled all the way when Mama prayed I'll get the lights. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I think he made this himself. Monica, what does this all mean? I'm not sure. But he left these things for you to find in a place that no one comes to anymore. All my little lambs. Why didn't we do this before? Why didn't we bring you here? Does this really change anything? I don't know if Zack is innocent or guilty. I don't know if he did anything to any of you. But I do know what he was trying to do for you. He was trying in one man's small way to lead you to a place where healing can begin. 
And now you're finally here. What are you going to do? Yeah. Thank you. The jury's coming back. You find the defendant guilty of all 54 counts. Your Honor, I move for a mistrial. Denied. Pursuant to the state penal code, the prisoner is hereby ordered to serve 54 consecutive life sentences without possibility of parole. Court adjourned. All rise. Don't waste your time on an appeal, Counselor. Good luck on your promotion, Monica. So I heard from Adam that things look good for your promotion. Be so hard on yourself. We're not fighting against flesh and blood here. We're fighting against evil, against the devil. But you and I both know that he's not going to win the war. And sometimes he wins the battle. They're going to file an appeal. And he's being transferred tomorrow to the state prison. And a man who's been convicted of murdering 46 children doesn't stand a chance in there. Monica, he's not going to live long enough for an appeal. And I'm supposed to go back and get my nice promotion and leave Zach to be killed in prison? I don't know. Well, I do. Zach? Monica wants to talk to you, and I can tell you from experience, you need to listen to her. You remember how you joked about me being an angel? I remember. Well, I am, Zach. I am. you, Zach. And even if no one else has seen into your heart, I know that he has. Ever since we came here, I've watched you offer moments of peace and gifts of healing to the people of this town. Some believe that they are lies. Others believe that they are genuine. Only you and God know who you are and where you were the day those children died. All I can offer you is this. The days ahead will be very, very difficult. But if you ask God to send an angel to protect you, Every day, every hour, every moment, if you ask him, he will. And if you will allow it, I will ask him that he will let me be that angel. And I will stay with you for the rest of your life. Hello, baby. 
Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. It could take years. It could be years for Zach, too, if he survives. And I want to help him do that. Well, the father has said, all right. Tessa, I never thought I would ever have to say goodbye to you. Come here. You won't forget how much I love you, will you? No, because no matter how far we are apart, no matter how many years or miles are between us, it won't matter. Because God has given us a gift of love that will last forever. Good morning. Well, good morning. Figured you'd come over to say goodbye. Well, not exactly. May I see him? Sure. Zach, Tom. Did they take him away yet? Everybody, please listen. We have something we need to tell you about Zach. Is it true that Zack is going away? I'm afraid so, honey. I'm going to miss him. He was going to get me another cat. What are you talking about, Joey? You never had a cat. <laughs> I had five of them. They were kitties. They lived at the school. Where? Uh, uh, I, I kept them in the basement because I knew that Wayne wouldn't let me keep them. Joey? Joey, what happened to them? Well, we were downstairs. It was that, that bad day. I was with my kitties. That's when I met the man. Am I doing okay? Bet you're hungry. Bet you're real hungry. What you got there, son? They're my kitties. Lunchtime. Oh, I have to get back to work. Gee, the kitties look awfully cold. Yeah, they're shivering. You see that valve on the heater? I bet if you turn that up, the heat would rise. The kitties would be much more cozy. Well, I'm not supposed to touch anything I don't know about. Oh, but the people who told you that know about the kitties. If they knew how cold the kitties are, they'd tell you to turn the heat up. You sure it's okay? A bad day. Who was it, Joey? Was it Zach? No. It was somebody else. He 
he was sort of like a shadow. He sort of uh, appeared and then disappeared, like in the movies. An invisible man came and showed you how to turn up the burner? Uh-huh. I never saw my kitties again. But when I told Zach about it, he said it was okay because he was going to get me another one. You told Zach? When? When he gave me Mr. Beans. You know what, Joey? I know where there's a kitty. Zach wanted you to have it. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. So Zach knew it was Joey all the time. That's why he wouldn't defend himself. What are we all going to do? Well, my offer still stands. Well, why should we stay? What's left of this place? You're left. This is my home. If we sell it, where am I going to live? Don't you see what has happened here? Evil came to this town. It attacked all of you and almost destroyed this place. If you give up and leave now, then evil will have won. It already has. No, I don't believe that. There is life here. There is still hope. Dr. Jean, isn't there something you want to say to these people? Some hope that is left to them, some small thing? Yes. What? Oh my God, I'm pregnant. What? I'm pregnant. We're pregnant. What? <laughs> Rindy came into the office just a few days ago. We ran some tests and... It's a miracle. Yes, it is a miracle. And this will either be the last child born in Ascension or the first child of a whole new generation. But that's up to you. Sophie. I'm not leaving. Neither am I. Me neither. I, I'm in too. So, what are you going to tell them about Zach? I'll tell them they need to build a better jail. <laughs> what am I going to tell my brother? You tell him how much you love him. a bus to catch. Wait a minute. How did she know about Rindy? I didn't tell anybody. How was your trip? Something tells me that you already know. I do, but I'd like to hear it from you. Zach wanted me to stay with him, and then we found out that he didn't do it. But he escaped, Tess, before I could tell him the good news. Well, why don't you tell him now? By the way, you passed your evaluation. So he was at the school that day. He took those babies home himself.
forgive me. I... I didn't know who you were. I hardly ever do, Monica. Why didn't I recognize you? Because you would have done anything for me. But look what you did for a stranger. And greater love hath no person nor angel than to give her life for another. Well done, good and faithful servant. It's time to go now, baby. You're gonna make a great supervisor. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Thank you. Of any tears left. I hope you do, baby. They'll keep you honest. Time to go now. When I walked across that road and sat beside you for the first time, I didn't know then how long the road would be or how wonderful it would be sharing it with you. So I don't know how I could just drive away without you now. Well, baby, we've got more to look forward to than the road now. We have eternity. I sure do love you. I love you. 